everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And one of our viewers, Rob, had an amazing request. And his request was, can I make an updated PixInsight workflow video while implementing the scripts into it? And Rob, I am more than happy to answer that request. In fact, I'm gonna do a series of workflow videos while implementing the scripts and incorporating different levels of processing. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Now let's jump on in and kick off my updated PixInsight workflow series. For the first video in my updated PixInsight workflow series, we're gonna be working with NGC 6960. Now this image was taken with my ASI 2600 MC one-shot color camera and that was on my Celestron Omni XLT150 OTA and my AVX mount. Now, in this uh, video, we're gonna be doing a very basic workflow and we're gonna be doing this without using SPCC. And you might be surprised at the results. Uh, in the next video, we'll be running through this while using SPCC and I'm gonna show you my new workflow, which includes both my scripts as well as SETI Astro scripts. And if you haven't used those scripts before, I'll have links to them in the description of this video here, so make sure to check them out. Uh, on my website, I have tutorials for my scripts, and then on SETI Astro's website, he has tutorials for his scripts. So uh, you have access to learn how to use them, how to get them, and they make PixInsight workflows a lot easier. So the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that our image orientation is where we want it. As you can see here, NGC 6960 is upside down. So what we're gonna to do to fix that is we're gonna to go to image, geometry, and in this case, I'm gonna rotate 180 degrees. All that this window here is stating is that we're gonna lose the astrometric solution, and that's okay. All that we're gonna do is click yes, and now we have the orientation where we want it. Now, as you can see, we have a very heavy green cast, and what that means is that we need to balance our color channels. Now, the next several steps are gonna be the correction phase of the image. And in my original workflow videos, I emphasize the importance of the correction phase. Taking your time and being thorough with the correction phase of your image is gonna make the rest of the processing a lot easier. So to do our color balance, what we're gonna do here is go to script, HLP, and we're gonna to go to astro image primer. What this is gonna do is perform linear fit on the image. And we also have several options that we can add to it. Now, being that this is gonna be a basic workflow, all that I'm gonna do here is check star correction. And that's gonna use Blurk Sterminator's correct only in order to do the initial correction phase of the stars. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my image. And then for the reference type, since this image here has a good balance between bright areas and dim areas, I'm actually gonna utilize the middle mean. That's gonna help give you the best of both worlds since we have a good balance of bright and dim. I'm gonna hit execute and the script is gonna go ahead and separate out the color channels. It's gonna calculate the mean values of each of the channels. And then since we selected middle mean, the red channel was chosen as the reference for linear fit because the red channel had the middle mean of all three channels. Once linear fit is done, uh, we're gonna get a combined image and the script is gonna go ahead and run correct only for Blur Exterminator. And what we're gonna be left with after this is gonna be an image that has been color balanced and the initial correction phase of the stars complete. So we're gonna close out of Astro Image Primer. We'll go ahead and minimize our original image and move it off to the side. And we'll do a quick stretch and we can see that the image has been color balanced. And if we back up, 
we see that the stars have had the initial correction phase done. Now it's time to crop the image. And one question that I get is, should you crop before or after linear fit? And really that's user preference. I've done a video where I introduced bad edges on, a, uh, on an image and I ran linear fit. And then I also did the same image with good edges and ran linear fit and it really made no difference at all. So whether or not you wanna run cropping before or after, that is completely up to you. To crop, we're gonna go ahead and go to process, all processes, and we're gonna to go to dynamic crop. I'm gonna draw a cropping box and the goal here is to eliminate any stacking artifacts. Now, if we move along the edge of the cropping box, we'll notice that the icon changes. If we click and hold, we can drag the cropping box up to the point where we want it to be. And all that we're looking for is any bad edges to be outside of the cropping box so that then they get eliminated from the image. Once we have our cropping box where we want it, all that we're gonna do is click the green check mark. Now our image is cropped and we can exit out of dynamic crop and it's time for background extraction. To do background extraction, we're gonna to go to script, SETI Astro, and we're gonna to go to automatic DBE. Now, Automatic DBE does a very good job with the default settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click execute. And there's a couple of little features in Automatic DBE. Uh, I recommend checking out SETI Astro's video on his website. You'll see uh, the tutorial video for Automatic DBE and he goes through everything that that script is capable of. Let's go ahead and exit out of the background model and we'll go ahead and click Control A, and we're left with a nice even background. We no longer need uh, the image here, which was prior to DBE. We'll just exit out, and we're left with Astro Image Primer underscore ADBE. So this is the point where I would do SPCC However, in this particular video, we're not going to use SPCC. We're going to do that in the next video. What we're going to do here is reduce noise. We'll go to process all processes and we'll come down to noise exterminator. Now for noise exterminator, all you want to do is remove just enough noise. You still want to have a little bit of noise in the image. You don't want to make it completely smooth. So playing around with the denoise value here, and seeing what works best. Um, that's gonna be the best way to play with your data. Um, in this particular case, I know that 0.7 works very well with this uh, image. So I'm just gonna do triangle, drag and drop. And noise exterminator is gonna go ahead and reduce the noise. And as you can see, we're not completely smooth. Uh, and we're also, uh, we have a little bit of noise. Now, as you're playing with this value here, if you click back, you can change the value, rerun noise exterminator until you get it where you want it. So in this particular case, we're good here. Um, now it's time to move on to the stars. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the full blur exterminator and I'm gonna remove the stars. And to do that, I'm gonna go to script HLP star console. Now here, I'm gonna check full star correction, which is gonna utilize Blur Exterminator's full process. And I'm gonna check star removal, which is gonna utilize star exterminator to remove the stars. Now the star removal does uh, unscreen the stars. And I've gotten a question of if you're using linear data shouldn't you do a stars only image? I'm putting the stars back in after stretching. I haven't had any issues um, doing this, but um, just a heads up uh, in case you're wondering, that's why I have it set up this way. I'm gonna choose my image, which is Astro Image Primer underscore ADBE. And then I'm just gonna click measure full with half max. 
And since this is a one shot color image, the script is gonna go ahead and extract the luminance. It's gonna measure the full width half max and it's going to automatically insert the value into Blur Exterminator, run the full Blur Exterminator, as you can see it doing right now. And then once the full Blur Exterminator process is done, then the script is gonna go ahead and run Star Exterminator. And once the script is completely done, we'll be left with a starless image as well as a star image. And then we can take those images and finish our processing. So Star Exterminator is running, it's almost done. And what we're gonna do after this is minimize our starless image and do a uh, very easy stretch of the starred image. So let's go ahead and exit out of Star Console. Let's minimize our starless image. And what we're gonna do here this image was taken with an Optolong L Ultimate Dual Narrowband Filter. So SETI Astro has a very good script for this. We're going to go to Script, SETI Astro, Narrowband to RGB Star Combination. And for one-shot color images, we're going to go ahead and select our star image, which is going to be um, Astro Image Primer, underscore ADBE, underscore star console, underscore stars. Now let's go ahead and show the preview. And what we're gonna see here is exactly what the script is gonna do. If we apply a star stretch and refresh the preview, we're gonna see here that we have the look of the final stretched image. Now on the stretch factor, if we increase this, we can induce a much more star filled image, or if we reduce the stretch factor, we can actually reduce the amount of stars. Now, I like in this particular image, a factor of 6.5, uh, that gives enough stars where the um, the nebula isn't overwhelmed by them. This is a very star heavy region, so uh, it can get pretty overwhelmed with stars. But I like what 6.5 stretch factor does on this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute. And what we're gonna be left with is a uh, stars image that has the um, RGB look. And it does a very good job of it. So let's go ahead and minimize our stars image. We'll minimize our original stars image and we're gonna bring up our nebula. Now to stretch this, we're gonna go to script, SETI Astro, and we're gonna go to statistical stretch. Now this is a, um, a very nebula filled image. So as you can see here, 0.25 is a good starting point um, when you have an image that has a very large nebula in it. If we go ahead and refresh the preview, we can see exactly what the script here is going to do. And it looks a little bit bright, it looks a little bit washed out. Don't worry about that. Um, you can definitely play around with the target median. Let me drop this to 0.1 just to show you what it'll do. Uh, it's gonna darken up the background. And I don't necessarily want to do that. And I'm gonna show you why here in just a moment. So I'm gonna put this back to the default 0.25. And we're gonna be left with this image right here. Once it refreshes, let's go ahead and execute. And now our nebula is stretched. So to process this, all that we're gonna do is go to process all processes and we're gonna come down to curves transformation. We wanna to go to RGB slash K and let's open up a preview. And this bottom left quadrant, if we raise it, it brightens up the background. If we lower it, it darkens the background. 
don't be tempted to go too dark with this, right? You want to have a nice subtle touch. Um, it's good to have a little bit of brightness in the background. Uh, you might be thinking, okay, well, the nebula's kind of dark. If we go to the top right quadrant and we drag that up, we can see that now our nebula is brightening up. And that's what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and uh, accept that by clicking the square, reset the stretch, and now this is what we're left with right here. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is let's open up a preview. And you can adjust this, you can you know go a little bit more if you wish. Um, I'm just gonna leave mine where it's at. I'm gonna go to uh, saturation, and I'm just gonna pull that saturation curve up. Now, if you um, end up in a scenario where it, you know, you're making adjustments and it's not making any effect, take a look at your preview window. If you see real-time preview, that's why. If you click on the preview button here again, that little circle, you wanna make sure that the process that you're in is showing in the title. At that point, you'll see the changes that are made. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of a saturation boost. And we can actually use the preview window as well to see before and after. Let's go ahead and click the square to accept. And I'm gonna exit out of the preview window. I'm gonna exit out of curves transformation. And now it's time to reintroduce our stars into our image. For that, we're gonna to go to script, HLP, and we're gonna to go to stars back. We'll go ahead and select our DSO image, which is deep sky object, which is gonna be our nebula. In this case, we can see the name here, and we're gonna choose that. And then we're gonna select the stars image, which is gonna be our NB to RGB underscore stars. We'll click execute, and we have our final image. And then in the next video, we're gonna use SPCC in the workflow so you can see how that fits in. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did and wanna help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support helps me create more content. Also, another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. I'll have the link posted in the description of this video here. Also, do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. What does your current workflow look like? Do you tend to use scripts while processing? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.